Jailbird Mom Wants Her Kid Back. Don't forget to subscribe to my new true crime channel, Mom's Murder Madness. This week, we're almost at 12K. Number 24611B in the interest of Cameron Parrish in the 198 Judicial District Court of Kirk County, Texas. Court is streaming from Kendall County in the courthouse by Zoom and YouTube. Are there any objections? No, Your Honor. No, no Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Mr. McCaskill, would you please begin the announcements? Uh, yes, Judge. Drake McCaskill, attorney for the department. Uh, Ms. Simmons? Jennifer Simmons, family-based caseworker for the department. Harold McKenna, family-based supervisor. Quincy Brennan, attorney for the mother. Uh, if she could announce as well, Judge. Ms. Graham, would you please, please announce? She's muted. If there's somebody there that can unmute her, please. I think the microphone on your end is muted. So no. Is it working on them? Okay, I hear I hear you now. Okay. Well, I'm totally ground with Cameron's mother. Thank you. Deborah Fuller appointed for the alleged father, Mark Martinez. Mr. Martinez, could you unmute and announce your name? It's star six to unmute, Mr. Martinez. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, uh, I am Mark Martinez. Anna Swallow, attorney ad litem for Cameron, ready? Sarah Woods, guardian ad litem, Hill Country Casa. Anybody else that needs to announce for the purposes of this hearing? I think that's everybody. All right, if you're not an attorney or you'll be giving testimony, please raise your right hand. That would include Ms. Graham and Mr. Martinez. Mr. Martinez, I know I can't see you, but can you state that yeah. you have your right hand raised, please? Uh, yes, sir, go ahead. Do each of you swear or affirm the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, we're here today for an adversary hearing. Ms. Fuller, I showed that your client was not served, but he has appeared. Are you waiving a are you waiving service? Yes, yeah, sure. Mr. Lukaska, um, do we have an agreement or do we need a contested hearing? Uh, no, Judge, we uh, do have an agreement. Okay. Uh, is that with both parents? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, what are the terms and conditions of the agreement? Uh, yes, Judge. With uh, regard to Ms. Graham, uh, the parties are agreeing the department will be named as the temporary managing conservator of Cameron, that mom will be named as the temporary possessory conservator of Cameron. We're asking the court to defer child support and medical support until further order of the court. Uh, we are asking the court to order the parties to attend a family group conference in order to develop the family plan of service that is narrowly tailored to address the reasons for removal in this case. Uh, as part of that, Judge, we're also asking the court to order uh, Ms. Graham to complete a hair test and nail test immediately upon her release from incarceration so we can get a baseline of what those levels may be. Um, that way we can address issues uh, accordingly. And also asking the court to admonish the mother not to alter her hair and or nails prior to the completion of that testing. Um, visitation, uh, we're asking for uh, Ms. Graham to have visits one time per month, or sorry, one time per week uh, for one hour, um, and that those visits be supervised. However, we are asking that those visitations uh, occur, uh, occur sorry, at a um, secure supervised visitation facility in Bear County uh, and the department and or belong will provide that uh, supervision uh, and in pay for county? that. Did you say Bear County? In Bear County, yes, Judge. Uh, Cameron's being placed in a uh, foster home in Bear County. Okay. Um, and the the closest visitation facility um, is, is in Bear. 
Uh, but based on the history of this case, we believe that having those visits at a at a supervised facility is is what's best for Cameron. Uh, could you explain why? Why? Hang on, hang possible. on, Ms. Graham. Okay. This is this is court. We have a, a procedure for how we do things. You'll have an opportunity to speak. Okay. Go ahead, okay. Mr. Mukesko. Um, and then uh, that's that's the entirety of the agreement with uh, or for Ms. Graham, Judge. Uh, with regard to Mr. Martinez, it's my understanding that he intends to sign uh, a waiver of interest uh, with regard to uh, Cameron. Okay. Mr. Brennan, is that your understanding of the agreement? That's my understanding. Excuse me, Judge. That's my understanding of the agreement. All right. And have you had... Uh sufficient opportunity to discuss this agreement with Ms. Bram? I've discussed the majority of it, Judge. Uh, I think her confusion based on what she just indicated to the court about the uh, supervised uh, security nature of the visitation, I don't think uh, she quite understood that part. If I could have just a moment to explain that to her uh, in a breakout room. That would be fine. Give me just a moment and I'll put you in um, Room one with her. Okay, that room is open. We'll be in a brief recess while Mr. Brennan talks to Ms. Graham. Okay, so I press that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, Your Honor, and I would ask that he not be uh, asked to participate in a family group conference. I'm mailing out the waiver of interest today. I just received it from the regional attorney's office and would like to be able to prove it up at the next hearing. Okay, well, I mean, it sounds as if that's appropriate considering the nature of the agreement. Are there any objections to Ms. Fuller's client being excused? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Okay. And then, um, Ms. Swallow, is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, Judge. I would request that um, if Ms. Graham is still incarcerated at the time of the family group, that we be allowed to have it virtual. I, I would also request that um, she be required to confirm her visitation 24 hours in advance. And that um, the child not be moved once he's placed in his foster home absent court order or agreement of the parties. What does that mean? Sorry. Hang on, Ms. Graham. You asked for three things, visitation or FGC to be virtual if mom was still incarcerated, the child not be moved without agreement of the parties or court. What was the other thing? That mom be required to confirm her visits 24 hours in advance. Okay. And judge, I would also, if mom could fill out or, or if I don't know if it's been, she submitted the child placement resource form, but I really would like to explore family for this child and um, that would be super helpful. Well, Miss, who's who's here for the department? It's Miss Simmons, Judge. All right, Miss 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 Graham. I understand you have questions, okay? But this is a court proceeding. It's not a meeting. It's a court proceeding. There's procedure. So you can't keep putting your hands up and you can't keep asking questions as we go through. I've given you the opportunity to talk to your, your attorney. You have to let this process play out. And if you have questions at the end, we can go over that. Okay. Um, who did you say, Mr. McKeska, Ms. Simmons? Yes, Judge. All right, Ms. Simmons. Um, I'm sorry, I'm still having an issue with this software. Okay, Ms. Simmons, you've heard the agreement. You believe this is in the best interest of the child? Yes. All right. And um, 
What did you ask, Ms. Swallow? For if if mom has completed the child placement resource form, and if not, right. we try to do that. Did you manage to get one of those, Ms. Simmons? I believe it was offered by the special investigator that met with her, and she did not want to complete it then, but it's something that can continue to be offered. But I, I didn't go and see her after the removal. It was another worker. Okay. All right. But you believe this agreement's in the best interest of the child? Yes. All right. And uh, is everything in the removal affidavit, to your knowledge, still true and correct? Yes. And um, do you believe that the department made all reasonable efforts to avoid a removal and to return the child home? Yes. Do you believe that the department um, provided the, the mother with every opportunity um, in, within those reasonable efforts to avoid a removal to return the child home? Yes. And despite those efforts, um, was the child unable to return home? Yes. Okay. Are you asking today for this agreement to be proved and for the department to be made the temporary managing conservator of the child? Yes. Okay. And you believe that there was a danger that existed? Yes. Okay. And for the child to remain in the home would have, would have been contrary to the welfare of the child? Yes. Okay. Do the attorneys stipulate to the reasonable efforts listed in the removal affidavit? Yes, Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. And the placement of the child at this time, Ms. Simmons, is appropriate? Yes. And does the child, is there, are there any needs that the child has right now that we need to address as far as um, the child is concerned? Uh, everything's being addressed. Okay. And who's here for CASA? Is it Ms. Rapp or Ms. Woods? Ms. R Ms. Woods, um, do you believe that this agreement's in the best interest of the child? Yes, Judge. And have you had a chance to check in the placement? Yes, Judge. Um, CASA believes that the placement is uh, safe, appropriate, and able to meet Cameron's needs. Um, we believe that it is in his best interest to be moved to the placement in Bear County. Okay. All right, Ms. Graham, I'm going to ask you some questions that I have to ask you, and I need you to answer the question that I ask you and save any questions that you might have or any other comments you might have for at the end, because I've okay. got to get I've got to get your questions to these your answers to these questions first. OK, OK. Did you have an opportunity to talk to Mr. Brandon about this agreement that you're that's been put on the record? Uh, no. Was that a yes? Uh, the first part, yes. Okay. This part no. No. Which, which part no? The placement with these people at this place or anything after what we talked about to begin. Okay. Well, the child has to be placed somewhere. Yes, I understand that. And then right now, the, the place that the child is going to be is in a foster home in Bear County until okay. a more appropriate placement can be found. Okay. So did you have a chance to talk to Mr. Brandon about that? Not really, but it's fine. Sure. What's your next question? My next question is, do you understand the agreement? Yes. And do you understand what rights and duties you have under the agreement? A little bit. What do you not understand? Which uh, part do you not understand? Okay, so he ha he has to be placed in Bear County, and I don't I have to don't do that. I have to go to San Antonio to see him one one hour, and then the lady asked if I if I do go see him to to let y'all know a, a day in advance, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, I get that. Okay. What other questions do you have? Do I have? 
okay, I didn't get served no paper. I didn't get, they didn't offer me no paper. They never asked me if I wanted to play some with anybody. She told me, and I have messages. Oh, it doesn't matter. They never offered me a paper saying that I could play some with anybody, okay? All right, so, well, here's, here's, here's what's going to happen, just so you understand that part. The worker is going to come see you okay. and bring that paper. Okay, so Jennifer is? It's going to be Jennifer. It's going to be somebody else. That's not important. It's going to be somebody who from the department is going to bring you that paper. Okay. And I'm ordering that to be completed so that if there are other people who can be considered as placement or other relatives, you you have the opportunity to give those to them and those people can be studied. Okay. As a possible placement for your child. Okay. So if there's somebody out there that you want studied, it's very important that you give that information so that if there's the opportunity for Cameron not to be in foster care and to be with family, he can be. I'm not okay. saying he will be, but yeah. at least there'll be an opportunity. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right. Now, the rest of the agreement, do you, you have any other questions about the agreement or do you or, are you asking me to approve it? Just go ahead and approve it and we'll figure okay. it out. And you understand that once I make it in order, that you have to comply with it. You understand that? Okay, so in in my terms, can you like sort of dumb it down and tell me what the agreement is? Okay, well, I'll <laughs> I'll make it more so simple. I understand for you. What, you, what I'm signing or saying okay to. I understand. Okay, now I want to make sure you understand. I'm, I can't give you any legal advice. I'm not your attorney. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to state the agreement back on the record, and I'll try to put it in terms that make more sense. Okay, you're agreeing that you're going to. Submit to a court order that makes your child, the, basically the Department of Family and Protective Services and Belong, the contractor that works with the department, they're going to be the temporary managing conservator of your child. Basically, they're going to be your child's parent until you work these services and you prove and demonstrate that you're ready to have your child back. Okay. And you're going to get one year to work these services and show that you can make the changes that you need to make to get your child back. It doesn't mean it has to take a full year, right? but that's what you get by law. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. The, the agreement is also that you're going to submit to a drug test okay. as soon as you get out. Okay. Hair and nails. And I'm going to approve the agreement that you can't do anything to your hair or nails before you get them tested. Okay, so I have to do hair and nails? Well, it says hair or nail. Well, I yes, I think that's what that, the agreement was, was hair and nails. Hair and nails, okay. Um, you can't do anything to your nails or your hair. Okay. So you get out of incarceration, you go straight to the department, and you say, where do I, or you call them, and you say, where do I need to go for this test so I can get it done? Now, I want you to understand, I'm not going to hold whatever those tests show against you. It's okay. not going to change the agreement. It's not going to put you back in time. Okay. It's just going to show me where we are and what we're working with as far as your substance abuse issue at the time you get out. Okay. Okay. Um, and yes, I'm going to agree that because of how this case went, and that your visitation needs to be in Bear County at a safe supervised facility until you can show this court that you don't need to have that anymore. Okay. And I don't know how long that's going to take. Okay. Um, the other part of the agreement is that Mr. Martinez is going to sign what's called a waiver of interest. Yeah. And he's basically not going to participate and he's not going to claim his, this child is his. Okay. Do you understand all the terms I put the agreement in? Yes. Okay. You still want to agree to it? It's fine. Yes. Okay. All right, then. And Mr. Martinez, you are, you want to sign a waiver of interest? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. You understand what that means and, and what effect that yes. will have on your relationship, if any, with the child? Yes, sir. My attorney um, uh, explained to me everything the other day on the phone. Okay. Then I'm going to adopt and approve the agreement. Based on 
the testimony and the agreement of the parties, the court will find that um, there's sufficient evidence to satisfy a person of ordinary prudence and caution that there was a danger to the physical health or safety of the child caused by an act or failure to act with a person entitled to possession and for the child to remain in the home as contrary to the welfare of the child. The urgent need for protection required the immediate removal of the child and reasonable efforts consistent with the circumstances and providing for the safety of the child were made to eliminate or prevent the child's removal and reasonable efforts have been made to enable the child to return home, but there's a substantial risk of a continuing danger if the child is returned home. I'm also going to put it on the record and take judicial notice of the fact that the court did have to sign a writ of attachment in this case, and the child did have to be located using law enforcement, and um, a mother eventually uh, turned herself in, and that's how we got to this place today. Um, I will adopt and approve the agreement of the parties Court will name the Department of Family and Protective Services slash belong as the temporary managing conservator of the child. Court will name the mother as the temporary uh, possessory conservator of the child. Uh, court will defer child support, medical support until further order of the court. I'm going to order the parties to hold a family group conference to develop a family plan of service that's narrowly tailored to address the concerns that brought the child into care. I'm going to authorize the parties to conduct that virtually if Miss. Graham is still incarcerated at the time you hold it. Um, if she's out, then I want it to be in person. I want her to have as much contact with everybody as possible throughout the course of this case. But I understand if she's incarcerated and Mr. Martinez has done a waiver of interest, there's no point in doing it in person. Um, I'm going to order that Miss Graham have a hair and nail test upon her release from incarceration. I want that to happen within 48 hours of her release. And I'm ordering that she not alter her hair and nails in any way. Um, visitation for Ms. Graham will be once a week for one hour after her release in a secure supervised visitation facility in Bear County. And um, that will continue until further order of the court or by agreement of the parties. Mom is to reconfirm 24 hours in advance. Now, Miss Graham, I want to make sure you understand. If you can, if you don't confirm 24 hours in advance, then you won't get that week's visitation. So okay. if you call 23 hours and 48 minutes, that's not 24 hours. Okay, it's got to be 24 hours. So don't don't wait. Well, and don't seven be late. o'clock the day before. It has to be seven o'clock the day before. You know. Yes, right? ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And it's got to be 24 hours. Um, the court will. Court finds that the placement of foster of foster care in Bear County is safe and appropriate, meeting the child's needs and in his best interest to continue at this time. Um, court finds the parties stipulate to the reasonable efforts. And Ms. Simmons also testified that reasonable efforts were made. And I'll set our status hearing for November 20th, 2024 at 930. November 20th, 2024 at 930. And what's going to happen, Ms. Graham, as we move through this case, is we're going to have a hearing every so often. The first one's going to be uh, in a little over a month, a month and a half. And then we're going to have one every 45 to 60 days after that. Okay. Okay. Up to that one year mark. It's very important that you accomplish as much as you can and you get as much work done as you can in between these hearings. Yes, sir. Now, obviously, if you're incarcerated, it's going to make it difficult for you to do some of these things. Right. Okay. Um, do we have a projected release date? Does anybody know? Oh, hopefully soon. Well, I understand you want to get out soon, Ms. Graham, but well, I'm wondering if I mean, anybody I'm has a date. I'm to show up. Okay. Ms. Simmons, have you heard anything? I have not. Okay. All that searching for a mute button just to say no. <laughs> Mr. Brandon, have you heard anything? I just want my client conferred with me, Joe. She's just uh, anticipating someone to come and make her bond soon. Okay. And Judge, right. yes. If I may, um, I didn't hear you order that the child not be moved absent agreement or order further order. Okay. And then also, 
I think it's important that the court uh, be aware that Cameron's doing well, that he um, did test positive on his hair test at pretty high levels. I saw um, that. And um, I, I would request, Judge, that you admonish the mother that she's not to discuss the case or his location or try to figure out where he frequents or goes to school or anything like that. The last thing I want to do is uh, have to worry about him, something happening to him or the department or belong needing to move him yet again because they're concerned for his safety. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ms. Graham, what Ms. Swallow is talking about, and she represents your child, okay? Yeah. We don't want Cameron to have to move around a bunch. I understand. We've, we've already had an issue well, with you absconding. Hang on, hang on. I'm trying. I'm trying to give you this information so that you have everything you need to move forward. Okay, so just yeah. listen up. Don't talk to anyone else about the case. Don't try to figure out where he is. Don't try to get somebody else to figure out where he is. The best thing you can do right now for yourself and your child is to get these services started as soon as you get out and work really hard on it. And by that, I mean, you have to engage in it and you have to admit that there are issues that we need to work through. You can't deny them. Yeah. You can't, you can't you, like getting into therapy and getting drug treatment. These are very important things for you because if you want your child back, right? Yes. That's how you're going to get it. That's how it's going to happen. And I, I'll tell you the same thing I tell every parent. I don't care what your situation is coming into this case. That doesn't stop me from believing in you. Okay. And that doesn't stop me from supporting you. And that doesn't stop me from working really hard to do everything that this court can do to reunify you with your child. But you have to do the work and you have to understand that there are issues. You can't ignore them and you can't pretend like they don't exist. Yes, sir. If you can work, if you can do that and you can work really hard, there's a lot of people in this room that want to see you successful. It doesn't matter how you came into the case. It matters how you go out. Right. Right. So we're looking forward and we're going to work hard and we're going to we're not going to worry about the past. We're going to look at the future and we're going to figure out what we need to fix so that you can get your child. Back. Yes, sir. That's my goal. Is it yours? Yes. OK, it's not going to be easy, but you can do it. All right. And your honor, uh, I just want to make sure you made it an order of the court that Mr. Martinez and myself do not have to attend a family group conference. And um, no I I will be um, out of the country on the 20th of November, but I will have someone stand in for me. OK, I'm not too concerned about it. I will make that order and I will excuse you from the 20th to get coverage. we will be fine. OK, um, at the, the status hearing um, again, November 20th, 2024 at 930. And then I have to state the admonishment on the record. I've already told you this, Ms. Graham, but I have to put it on the record. State of Texas gives parents and CPS cases 12 months, it's one year, to demonstrate that you can provide a safe, stable, violence, and drug-free home for your child. If yes, you sir. can't do it within one year, your rights to your child could be subject to more restriction or they could be terminated. Okay. If you have questions about that, you need to talk to your attorney, okay? All right, Mr. McCaskill, is there anything I failed to address? Uh, no, Judge, I believe you covered everything thoroughly. Okay. Well, thank you all for your time and your service, Ms. Graham. Good luck to you, and I mean that. Yes, sir. Uh, do we don't we don't have court on the second now? No, ma'am. Okay. So it's on the November what? November twentieth at nine thirty. November twentieth. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All parties are excused. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Judge.